Hey guys, if you're not already aware, as part of the 25th anniversary of EverQuest, the developers participated in a AMA thread recently, and the answers were just recently posted. I thought it'd be cool to go through this. Um, I've already gone through this myself and kind of looked through you know, TLP relevant questions. Um, and there's a few in here that while they're not the answers that I hoped to get, um, I was happy that the, the questions were asked and I was happy that the questions were answered as well. Let's just go through here. I'm not gonna read through all of these. I'm just gonna target the TLP ones and I'll edit the video to skip through to each one quickly. Are you interested in further clamping down on the use of third-party automated play? If not, is it because you consider the current level of policing sufficient or for some other reason? The answer, yes, we are interested and continually work towards clamping down on illegal use of third-party programs. Due to privacy and security reasons, there tends to be a gap in the perception between the actions being taken and what is purported. Maybe a little, but uh, I... I think it's fairly well known that their policing efforts are pretty lackluster. And when people do get hit with bans, it's not even really a ban, right? It's like a, like a suspension <laughs> and people just come back. It really doesn't slow people down all that much. And I mean, you'll have people with, you know, dozens of accounts that are cheating and they'll get hit with like one account a ban or something or a suspension out of 10, 20 accounts. It's just like, there's, there doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason, consistency, and and obviously I think they go way too soft on these guys. So yeah, this is something that needs to be changed. This is something they mentioned in their roadmap that they're gonna be implementing some sort of anti-cheat measures. So here's hoping. All right, this is a good one because this is something that I've kind of advocated for is smaller raid sizes. Question is, can we get 10 man raids? Absol replies. This comes up every so often, usually about 40 or so person raids, which while feasible causes problems for some guilds and frankly we just don't have time to do it. But a 10 person raid isn't really feasible at all. The mechanics of a raid usually can't be done with so few people. Simple mechanics can translate down, don't stand in the fire and things like that. However, complex mechanics often just can't be accomplished without several groups. It's hard to even ask so few people to manage an off tank situation. Things that might require a certain class like charm or mez are generally bad for small groups since they just may not have someone who can do that. Basically what you're asking for are what we call missions. Maybe you're asking for two group missions. Those also have issues in that it can be hard for folks to get two groups together. So no 10 person raids. I think that 10 person raids is probably a little small, but I think something like, you know, like 24 or something, 24 or 30, or as AppSource says 40 would even be a big improvement to like the, the 72 man raids in classic. I'd love to see those raids get tuned down. Those raids are not mechanically complex. I know that they're probably talking about live here, but, um, I think we could talk about this in terms of TLPs as well. It's a little bit sad to see that it gets written off a little bit here. Hopefully they can kind of reconsider for the future in TL for TLPs. All right, this again, this is another one that's I think mostly targeted at live, but I think it kind of gives us uh, some insight into their TLP thought process. Would it be possible to make raids more difficult at launch temporarily and have a systematic way of doing sort of like the guild banner buff, but in reverse, like a zone wide debuff Maybe, but not exactly like Uqua or Demiplane, but a similar idea. Maybe sort of like Mitigation of the Mighty. And then after a certain amount of time has passed, the debuff could be reduced or disabled. Absol replies, this is something that we have talked about several times. We have some ideas that might work pretty well, but we just haven't had time to delve too deeply into them, much less implement them. Once again, referencing lack of time. So I... I think it's cool at least they're talking about it again i think they're talking about live here but i really wish they would figure out a way to make tlp raids harder i don't care if they if they reduce the, the difficulty over time that's fine with me but again can we get smaller raids on tlps can we get harder raids on tlps that'd be really cool uh next one would it be possible to implement the scaling of a raid based on the number of players absolute replies a nope everquest just doesn't scale well it's easy enough to lower HP and things like that, but to make spells weaker requires entirely new spells most of the time. Essentially, to scale a raid from 50 to 40 people will often require almost remaking the entire thing with new spells. If you get too few people 
mechanics stopped being possible and would have to be rewritten or replaced. Sadly, back in the day, nobody had the impressive foresight to plan for scaling. This makes sense to me, uh, what he's referencing here, having to recreate the spells, and this is just kind of how EverQuest is designed. I don't know. I wonder if there's a creative solution here. You know, I'm not knowledgeable enough to know on this, but I wish they could find a way to scale raids, uh, especially on TLPs. I think being able to scale raids to smaller sizes and increasing difficulty would make uh, TLPs a lot more interesting. Now, I'll just, I'll just quickly comment here on, so there's apparently several old zone questions. Basically, They're all basically the same, which is like, hey, I like running around in old zones. Can we add more content to these old zones? And basically the answer is no, because no one's going to do this stuff. I just think it's interesting that there's a lot of old zone questions. I just think it further points to like, hey, people really like some of the old content in EQ and maybe some more focus should be put on that side of the game, namely uh, the TLP experience. Okay, here's one. Any plans on beefing up classic through pop? New quests, raid item revamps, group gear revamps, new raids, new zones? Absol replies, not really. As mentioned in another answer, adding content to the old world has limited value. It's either too easy for most players because it fits in with the appropriate level for the old zone, or it's too hard because it is a high level con it's high level content in a low level zone. I think Absor maybe missed the point of this question. To me, this question is hopefully targeted at like TLP uh, servers. Um, basically, I think this person is asking, can we can we add new content or change up the content in classic through pop, maybe through difficulty or also different gearing options and mobs and whatnot. I think that's a really cool idea, kind of in the vein of like Season of Discovery that World of Warcraft is doing. I think that'd be a cool like a cool TLP rule set. I know that they, you know, as you'll read through this entire AMA, you'll find that this team just doesn't have the time and resources to put into TOPs. I think that's really unfortunate. I think there's a lot of potential there. Okay, here's one. Have you considered adding picks or instances of increased difficulty for zones, missions, or raids? Absor, nope, it's not a simple process as you might think. And frankly, if you want harder content, there are probably several expansions ahead of the one you are in that has exactly what you are looking for. Hopefully this guy's also talking about TLPs. Again, I think people are asking for TLPs to have difficulty increased. This could be a cool way to do it by adding just like an instance or a pick of dungeons or raids that is uh, like a hard mode or something. Again, I get that it's not a simple ask. It requires resources and time. Unfortunately, I think Absor's kind of missed the point here. And um, it, it kind of seems to be a theme that TOPs are a little bit of an, of an afterthought. Do you have plans to convert the flagging and pop to achievements to alleviate confusion and issues on the progression steps? All right, Absor says, I'm not sure there's enough time in the rest of my life to manage that. My brain no longer holds any of the complicated nightmare of pop progression. I think it got pushed out so I could keep my sanity. That would certainly be a worthy task, one that I would love someone else to do, but I just don't know if we can dig out time for it. But then Ingress says, uh, we have plans to add achievements that will at least make it easier to track. There's no ETA on this task. This is fine. I don't think pop progression is really all that confusing uh, to people anymore, but um, sure. Any chance of missions from LDON and lower be able to do them with two or three group members instead of six? Uh, Absor says, nope, that is not something I see us doing, but then things change and I can't say it will never happen. Uh, I think this is going to be good for people that want to grind out like the LDUN AUG with less people. Uh, it is annoying to have to have sick when the missions are so easy. Could you please revert the experience nerf that was applied to AOC instances on TLP servers in 2022? Ingress says, no, we made those changes intentionally. Yeah, let's keep that one in place. We don't want people uh, grinding in AOC instances. In 2016, the development team went back and enabled old models for goblins, skeletons, specters, orcs, etc. in classic zones on TLP servers. I'm wondering if the team would consider doing a second pass to finish zones that were missed, such as Lava Storm. Absor says, a little inside baseball here. That was not something that all of us wanted to do. It was controversial, and in the end, it became an executive decision to make those changes. I was on the side of using new models wherever we can. If we can make the game look better, we should. I don't really want to have that argument again, though most of the folks involved are gone now. So for now, I have to say that we have no plans to change any of that. And Ingreth also says this is not a task I think we should spend our resources on. I agree. They don't need to spend their resources on this. I think it's cool that the old models are there. I wish there were more of them there. I wish the new zone revamps weren't there. I think that apps were saying that the game looks 
better with the new models is subjective. I think TLP players in general would prefer um, a lot of the older look. Is there going to be more class balancing in the future? Aristo says, yes, we've got more people who can do systems work on the team. So there's more room in the schedule for class tuning now. Some of this work is already in game and some is still to come. I'm assuming most of this is directed at, uh, at live, but uh, you know, here's hoping that maybe some of this will trickle down or maybe someone will turn an eye to the OP balance. Who knows? Doubtful, but we can hope. We can dream. Here's a TLP specific one. Any chance you'd be willing to address the glaring imbalance of DPS versus utility across the expansions? Will you ever do class balance for TLPs? Aristo says, while our main focus has to be the live game, many of the changes we have made and plan to make will affect the TLP as well. And Greth says, we do not plan a specific task to adjust balance on older expansions. As Risto says, some tasks we do for balance will go backwards to a certain extent, which will balance TPs and TLPs in later expansions. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a plus and minus here. Like they clearly aren't thinking directly about TLPs, unfortunately, but the plus side is some of their changes should trickle down. I don't know how deep we're talking about, but somewhere in the TLP timeline, um, balance should be improved. Gotta take what we can get, you know? Is there any particular concern around the level 70 era expansions, Omens through Prophecy of Roe? Currently casters in that era are unable to do anything meaningful in raid situations due to resists and poor balancing 20 years ago. Would there be any considerations to implementing some of the more favorable resist checks specifically for that era? Negreth says, I won't say never, but we do not have any plans at this time. Uh, yes, please. I have called this out several times. This is a huge problem uh, on TLPs. It's really unfortunate that Negreth blows this one off. I don't know how much time it would take to to implement a change like this. I know they did a lot of resist work on Viniki. I don't know if some of that could be used. It'd be nice to see for sure. All right. Oh, monks. There have been a plethora of indirect buffs to early era monks. Yes, there have been. And melee, yes, throughout the last four years. Primarily no longer needing magic items to kick or auto attack or more loot such as Viniki and Mischief. Are there any plans to re-add focus items pre Lucklin as a way to equalize the imbalance? Aristo, no, we have no plans to restore the ability for focus items to be used before they were introduced. Yeah, I don't care too much about like focus items in particular being the solution here. And, and please, I, yeah, and actually I take that back. I really don't want focus items to be the solution because I don't want more power to be introduced to the, the early TLP game. I would rather see power taken away from like everybody, just a disproportionate amount of power taken away from melee uh, as this guy has mentioned. What is it rogues bring to the table that other classes can't already do? Are there plans to address the issue or will rogue be left to squander in the gutters like the dirty fatherless sea urchins that they are? Are there any utility or DPS based reasons to play rogue over any of the following classes? Ranger, monk, warrior, bard? Marista says, we're aware that rogues aren't in the best spot as far as their personal damage goes, and we have plans to address that. Beyond that point, it's a matter of which class playstyle you enjoy playing more. Uh, this is interesting. I think this is a, a live question, but it is actually very much mirrored on TLPs at this point as well. So I wonder if any of the changes that they make to Rogue uh, will trickle down to TLPs. Any chance the fantastic class fixes you're implementing could be done more retroactively? Negreth says some will, some won't, depending on the nature of the fix. So again, I think this is kind of mentioning that some changes might trickle down to a certain extent. Don't know how far and which ones, but um, again, here's hoping that some of this balance will uh, Im positively impact TLPs. Can TLPs get the same treatment with evolving items like live where opening raid mission chests also give experience? Negreth says, this is a time consuming process and at this time I do not plan to go backwards. It is in no way built in and is custom scripting. Yeah, I don't know how important evolving items are on TLPs for a long time. I can't think of any like significant ones. Not something I'm super concerned with. Will the devs consider backfilling unity buffs 
or quality of life on TLP or allowing group buffs that already exist to be purchased earlier. Aristo says it would be nice, but we don't anticipate being able to do this. Yeah, I don't think this is really a problem. We don't really, I don't think we really want to change the game that much. Dragon of North AAs really need to be shared. Is this something that is in the works? Aristo says, assuming this is referencing alternate personas, we definitely have had discussions with the code team about it. It's certainly not something that we have the ability to do, but are investigating solutions for sharing quest AAs. This is just uh, an FYI for the TLP server. If you're planning on leveling some personas, the DON AAs uh, are not going to be shared. For quality of life reasons, would it be possible to review backfilled spells from classic to pop? This Aristo says the scope of this sort of review makes it unlikely. If there are any specific spells that are problematic, we can investigate that. But the task, look at four expansions of spells, is not likely to be prioritized. I'm not really sure what this means, to be honest. What I don't understand what backfilled spells are. I don't really have a problem with like spells from Classic to Pop. So, uh, what is the latest timeline on finishing dot consolidation? Aristo says the last two lines are still on the backlog, but are not prioritized above balance concerns, which is our current focus. All right, this has been on the backlog for like four years or something. I don't know. It's, it's been a long time. I don't know if Necro is the last one that needs to be finished, but for Necros out there, this is uh, this is not this is not what you want to read <laughs> because to me, this says uh, this ain't happening this year. AA tokens. Why not sell AA tokens that auto grant every expansion except the current one? Aristo says selling abilities directly is definitely over the line for the sort of power we feel is appropriate on the marketplace. Thank God. That's uh that's a positive note there. We're not selling we're not selling AAs anytime soon through the marketplace. Great. Will you guys ever heed the cries of the Draken to expand our racial breath weapon to level appropriate instead of capping at 70? No one cares. Don't play Draken. The team made several passes to take out of era items out of the game and strip them to eras that they should be in. Would the team consider another pass to clean them up? Risto says, we're probably not going to have a consolidated team-wide task the way we did for Rage Fire launch, but if there are still outliers, please let us know, preferably soon. Cool. Yeah, I wouldn't expect them to do a whole nother, a whole nother pass, but uh, I'm glad that they're willing to continue to make those changes if they're brought up. How popular is housing among the developers? Any hardcore cozy gamers or absolute hoarders? Any thoughts on making it an earlier part of the TLP lifecycle or expanding it in future life expansions? I'm just going to read this one here. Negreth says, we do not plan to make housing available earlier on TLP servers. Well, I don't care. Sorry if you do. No houses. Uh, this is an interesting one. What is something you've worked on that was really difficult to do and what made it difficult? Uh, the one that caught my eye here was uh, Niente said server merges. I won't read this whole thing, but basically she just says that the server merges are pretty complicated and buggy, I guess. So that might answer some questions as to why they're so reluctant to merge TLP servers together, um, even when it seems pretty obvious to do so, or even to implement a like pre-planned merge um, at the beginning of a TLP cycle. If multiple devs are responding to this AMA, if you were given free reign time money to do whatever you wanted to EverQuest, what would you do? Ingreth replies, I would have a dedicated developer responsible for curtailing cheaters and other behavior that disrupts the game for our players. Yes, please. I mean, this doesn't even need to be a developer. This could be a guy making like minimum wage, literally just eyeballing the dude AFK farming Sirens Grotto 24-7 and just banning the guy. Like it, it really wouldn't be that hard, man. And we don't need uh, we don't need a rocket scientist uh, to do it. All right. The TLP section. Is there any possibility of doing a progression server? That is like WoW Season of Discovery. J Chan says time is vast, so we're not going to say never, but it is unlikely that you'll see a heavy revamping of early EverQuest. This is devastating. <laughs> um, I think this is one of the coolest things that they could do for TOPs. Not to say that I want to forever change classic EverQuest. I think that it's important to preserve that the best we can, which unfortunately um, 
they break themselves have done a very bad job at. For the future of TLPs, I think something like this would be so, so cool. I know that their continuous reasoning is that they don't have time, they don't have resources. I wish that the company, the decision makers would take another path and instead of investing so much time and money into live, would consider the, the TLP experience as worthy of investment. Is there going to be an earlier release for the 25th TLP to coincide with the actual anniversary? Ingress says, no, it will be released in May. Uh, I think this is not really a great mystery. This was on their roadmap. I know there's some confusion about the calendar on the test server, but uh, I, I think this was never really in question. It's going to be in May as usual. Are there any plans to announce the new TLP soon? Will player feedback be taken into account? Soon as relative, J-Chan says soon as relative. So soon could be yes, or it could be no. Yes, we take player feedback into account. Ingress says it will depend on the feedback. We will listen to feedback, but not necessarily act on that feedback. Some feedback we are given, we cannot execute in a reasonable amount of time. Some we can, and some we disagree with or is too fringe. All right, a couple of things here. Jay Chan is being a little bit enigmatic about the word soon here. I think it's possible that these servers are going to get announced at PAX East. So that would put their announcement for these servers about three-ish weeks ahead of schedule. That doesn't change a whole lot in terms of like when we're going to get our hands on the server, but it's always better to know sooner. On that note, Ingress says, hey, we, we don't have enough time to react to this feedback. Well, you guys don't tell us what the server is until like four weeks before it launches. So I think if you guys could push up your timeline, announce these servers a lot sooner, we'll be able to actually give you feedback <laughs> that you can act on. Are there any plans to allow Beast Lords and Berserkers at level one on the new TLP launches? Ingress, it is something we've considered but have not yet implemented. If these classes are okay with minimal new character quests, no epic releases until the time of that epic, and other things like that, it is feasible. Changing these classes starting experiences such that it is the same as the original classes is not feasible currently. Yeah, I don't think anyone cares about these things that Ingreth is mentioning, the starting experience or when the epic is released. Just let these guys play, man. Like no one cares about the low level armor sets and stuff. Is the 25th anniversary server going to be more like Oakwind in terms of bonuses? And Ingreth just flat out says no, which is interesting. So some of the speculation has been, will they combine multiple rule sets into like the Mischief 2.0 that we're anticipating? Ingreth just straight up says no on the Oakwind question. So. Maybe we're not going to see uh, a mashup of Oakland and, and Mischief, and uh, maybe it's something else. Year of Dark Paw and the 2024 TLPs. Would you consider adding the monthly items to the 2024 TLP marketplace that they missed as the server hadn't opened yet? So the new characters on new servers will be able to obtain all items from this special year. Ingress says those items will be available again in the future, but not this year. So that's fine. There's a meme of fixed for the next TLP, which seems to come from your development timeline with monthly patches to fix things being a bit slow for them to be relevant for the current TLP where the issue exists as they typically move to the next era in eight to 12 weeks. Two recent examples of that come to mind are the corruption cures on Baniki and legacy bonus for AA on Oakwind. What are your thoughts about this and the responsiveness in your model when things don't go as intended? Ingress says, The current EverQuest model does not allow for easy non-disruptive changes to the game. While we could wish for a more responsive model, it is not what we have. Niente says, Both of these problems reached the dev team while we were working 95% on new expansions and expansion features in the late fall and winter. This is a very busy time of year for us. They can be quite difficult to squeeze in additional timely issues for TOP servers. It may not be ideal, but we do our best to fix things promptly and we do care about TLP issues, even if it is smaller or late stage TLP. Yeah, despite Niente saying that they care about the TLP issues, the fact of the matter is that they just don't have time. <laughs> so yeah, this is gonna be kind of what we get. We're gonna get late changes, late fixes. Um, their, their eye is not on TOP servers for the most part. Can you give some roadmap for Vaniki's end of life? It was mentioned that there would be new achievements for later expansions, but overall, it is, in, is it intended to remain as somewhere those achievements can be done or will it be merged into live? Uh, Ingress says, at some point in its life, Vaniki will be merged with another server. This will happen either when the server population reaches a critical point or Vaniki is at live and the server population is at a different critical point. 
These merges happen at the same time each year. Niente says that she hopes that we can keep Vaniki around so players who have not had the opportunity to get the special achievement and items on the server can still do so. Uh, however, if the server sustains too low of a population for too long, it is at risk of being merged. Uh, so there's a lot of people that are heading over to Vaniki to do those achievements. I think that's a really cool like side project thing to go do for fun. Um, so I hope that Vaniki stays up for a long time. Uh, all right, Agnar people, here you go. Are there plans to remove Trubox from Agnar? There are no plans. Sorry, guys. Don't play on Agnar. It's weird. Are you working on adding Bazaar to Classic for next TLP? Or are there or any other auction house Bazaar overhauls? Congrats. So this is not something we have seriously considered. At this time, we are going with the classic experience of no bazaar until it's normal release time. I wouldn't mind this. There was some way. I wish we could get old bazaar back. Um, side note. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of like Tunnel Quest. So if we could get some sort of automated auction bazaar mechanic in classic, I think that that'd be cool. When are server transfers going to be allowed between Rizlona and Eridun as both have the exact same rule set, unlock speed and progression point? Niente, this is something that has not yet been discussed eternally in Greth. We will consider this. The holdup is a decision on when the advantage of freely multiboxing for mini expansions versus server with tighter restrictions expires. We do not have an ETA currently. All right, there you go. I don't really have much of an opinion there. Are there any plans to add more quality of life things to TLP like premium guild halls, fellowships in at Classic so we can all hang out group with our guildies? Uh, would it be possible for the following systems, housing, banners, fellowships, overseer to be released earlier on TLP? Ingress says uh, not at this time, basically. Uh, which, yeah, please keep this stuff out. What's going on with Thornblade? Are you going to merge it, offer transfers to Mischief? Niente, the 2024 roadmap includes our current plans to potentially merge Thornblade and Mischief later this year. I don't play on either of these servers uh, currently. I feel bad for Thornblade. I feel bad for any overflow server. I think that they should merge servers like ASAP and very aggressively in the case of overflow servers because those servers are just kind of doomed to uh, fail, basically. Are there any plans to review and revise rules, events, gameplay for TLPs in Greth? We review the rules each year. We tend to only make incremental changes, but we do continue to innovate on the idea. And they do. They do change. They make, like you said, they make small incremental changes. You know, sometimes I wish they would make more changes, but um, I'm glad they do continually evaluate uh, the rule sets. Hello, can you please open Agnar to GOD or OOW, please? Ingrath, that is not within the spirit of the Agnar server, so no. Again, uh, don't play an Agnar. It's weird. What about a hardcore server where you only get 10% of the normal XP per kill? Yes. Ingrath. It is an interesting idea. We did have a slow experience server, and while not a flop, it was not the it was not long lasting. It also had slower unlocks, so it is not an exact match to your idea if you want a 10% XP, XP with the standard unlock schedule. Uh, this is basically what I'm asking for. I know I'm uh, me and whoever asked this question are like the only two guys in the universe, maybe that want this. But uh, this is what I want. I want a server that just takes a really long time to get to max level. I want levels to be more meaningful. I'm okay with like the, the unlocks being slower. Uh, you know, there's a balance there that would have to be figured out, but I think it'd be really cool. It's tough in this day and age when, um, you know, you're just feeding EverQuest players like straight crack cocaine in the form of like Mischief and Oakwind with uh, like loot and XP rates. But um, yeah, I wish we could get back here, man. That'd be cool. In honor of the year of Darkpaw and with the success of TLPs in addition to classic games, could the Agnar server be considered to be moved to free to play? J Chan, this is a membership only experience. Stop playing on Agnar, guys. Early TLP rating is mainly throttled around the concept of MOTM, with AOCs and Truebox now being limitations to why MOTM was originally introduced. Are there plans to revisit MOTM and how it works? Ingreth, we would need to see some real data supporting this change. Okay, uh, MOTM does need to be revisited. The pet mechanics to me need to definitely go away. The, the reason the pet mechanics were put in place to begin with was on rage fire when mage box armies were killing our open world targets. Uh, well, we don't really care too much about open world targets anymore. We have AOC instances. If Thumb Botter wants to go bot AOC instances with 40 mages, I don't really care. 
Like right now they're already botting with 40, you know, characters of like an, you know, an actual like EverQuest group structure. So, I, you know, I don't care what class they're going to use to do it. Ideally, you just ban those guys entirely, but you know, uh, we are where we are. So yeah, I think there's other aspects of MOTM that need to be looked at too. The response by Ingreth is strange to me. I mean, this just says I don't play on TLPs and uh, I have no idea what's going on. Maybe if we give Ingreth some more feedback on MOTM in a detailed and constructive way, uh, maybe something will be reconsidered. The thing about MOTM that I struggle with is like kind of the only way sadly right now that we are able to emulate some form of difficulty on bites and there's not much is with how long it takes to kill MOTM mobs. If MOTM goes away entirely and mobs just melt in just fractions of a second, the game becomes really trivial really fast. So if MOTM were to like go away or be redesigned, I would like for it to somehow retain or increase the difficulty of raid mobs in a different way. All right, so that's all the TLP related questions that I was able to find in here. Again, I was actually kind of surprised by a lot of the questions that got asked. Didn't always get the answers I wanted, but at least we kind of know where they stand. I think a lot of stuff does come down to the time they have, the resources they have, and the priorities, the directives that they've been given from their management team. Who knows if that will ever change? Uh, I think it's unlikely, but you know, we could dream. We could dream of a day where there's a there's a TOP team dedicated to uh, making classic EverQuest progression uh, the best experience possible. But uh, yeah, I think we'll I think we'll be dreaming for a while. So hey guys, we're getting closer to May. Everyone's getting a little bit amped up for the new server. Keep an eye out. I'll let you know as soon as the new servers are announced, and uh, we'll talk about the rule set. I'm looking forward to playing there with you guys. Uh, hope to see you there soon.